Hey, it's Nathan from Pack Hacker, and in this video we're going to be taking a look at the Zack, a 41 litre backpack from Swedish bag company Sangfist. Here at Pack Hacker, we're a team of frequent travellers that like to review travel gear and bags all the time, so if you're new here, consider subscribing. So without further ado, let's take a look at the Sangfist Zack. If your surname is as awesome sounding as Sangfist, you're probably going to name your company after it. And that is exactly what Anton Sangfist did when he created this fashionable bag brand in Stockholm, Sweden, 2004. Our first experience with Sangfist was over six years ago when we tested their Uno Daypack, a bag we still use to this day. What first caught our attention was the aesthetic, which considering that Sangfist is a more fashion focused brand, isn't surprising. But what kept us around was the practicality and durability, which is why when Sangfist released the 41 litre Zack backpack, we couldn't wait to get our hands on it. Opinions on aesthetic can vary wildly from person to person, but we're just gonna come right out and say it. We love the overall look and style of this pack, which is exactly what you'd expect from a brand that takes its inspiration from Nordic landscapes and urban city lifestyle. The Sangfist sack is available in two colours, the black which is the one that we have right here and Beluga which looks a tad lighter and has got like a dark green tint to it. To be honest we like both of them, you can't go wrong with either. With dimensions of 20.5 inches in height, 14 inches in width and 9 inches in depth, this pack is a beast, squeezing just under maximum carry-on dimensions. And if we're honest, we feel that the quoted 41 litres is actually a bit stingy. For comparison and in reference, this pack is a lot closer to the 45 litre Goruk GR3 than the 40 litre Goruk GR2, for example. Now, there is a 26 litre version of this pack available, which may be all right for some weekend getaways, but in regards to one bag travel, it's probably just a bit small. The Sangfist Zack is rocking not one, but two highly durable fabrics. 1680D ballistic polyester around the corners and back of the pack, and Cordura Ecomade polyester ripstop on the front and sides. To put it simply, this pack is made out of some of the most versatile, durable, and reliable materials out there. This thing is really built to last, and the combination of the two different materials only help to improve the aesthetic. The pack also weighs in at an impressively light 1.85 pounds, one of the lightest 40 litre plus backpacks we've reviewed. One of the first things you'll notice on the outside of this pack is all of the handles going on. Now there's five in total, you've got one on the top, one on the right hand side, you've got two on the front and one on the bottom as well. We really like them, there's some impeccable stitching going on and they're nicely padded too. You will also find two compression straps on either side of the pack, which are these things here. Now these are really great because first of all, they don't get in the way of any zips or any pockets on the bag, which is really useful. And also when you've got a bag this big, having compression straps is also really, really handy. They've got these cool kind of um, elastic keepers on here as well. So you don't have any dangling straps around, which is also great. The compression straps can also help when you're trying to secure something to the side of the bag on this side where they've got the side pocket. Now this is really cool with something like a tripod. We found you can just stick the leg in here, pop it all the way up the top and put the compression straps over and that'll secure it in really, really well. That's a great fix if you wanna carry a tripod on the outside of this thing. But that's kind of where the side pocket at least kind of loses its usefulness. Unless you've got something big and you've got it all the way up the side of the bag, it's just not that great for anything small. So most people use a side pocket to pop their water bottle in. And unfortunately we found this just, it's just a weird shape. It's too long and short to house like a one liter bottle. Even if you try and cinch this compression strap over it, we found the bottle just falls out. It's not ideal. Sangfist referred to this pack as a backpack and a duffel. And while it is true, you can carry this thing like a duffel just by holding it like this, putting the two shoulder straps together and kind of using it like this and it actually separates the weight, balances the weight really, really great. It's just not something we find ourselves doing often. If you're in the rush for like a train or you've got a lighter load in here, then this can work quite well. 
but something that has backpack straps on and is this big, we prefer to carry it on our backs. The shoulder straps here, along with the back of the pack, are really well padded. We really like this, and it provides a surprisingly comfortable carry for such a large backpack. And there's also an adjustable sternum strap, which you can move to whatever height you'd like. It feels really well made, and there's an elastic keeper again for all of those dangling straps. While the Sangfist Zack does check a lot of those travel pack boxes, unfortunately there's a few things that hurt its case just a little bit. On this thing, you're not going to find any load lifters, a frame sheet, or a hip belt. Now, not every travel backpack necessarily needs all of these things, but for a bag this size, and the amount it can stick out from your back, we feel they would be useful additions. At this point, it's important to note that Sangfist sell the Zack backpack as a weekend bag and not a full-on travel pack, so we can see why they've made a few of these omissions. Every zip on the Sangfist Zack is YKK, and there are even a few different sizes going on. The main enclosure is zipped up with a big, chunky-teethed YKK8VS. The laptop compartment is YKK8RCZ, and everything else is a nice YKK5RCZ. The zips on this pack are built to last, and the bigger compartments have the bigger zips. It all makes sense. Looking at the front of this pack, you may be mistaken to think that there are no quick access pockets. Well, you would be wrong, because there are in fact three. All of the openings are on the back of the pack, which is a really great security feature, and we love the way they've done this. Now, the first pocket we're going to be taking a look at is the one on the top right here. This one is surprisingly big, and it stretches the entire width of the top of the pack. It's going to be perfect for your quick access items, so we're talking passport, phone, wallet, even headphones. We really like this pocket. The second pocket we're going to be taking a look at is pretty much exactly the same, but it's just on the side. So it's a similar size, kind of stretches the depth of the pack. You can fit you know, pretty much the same you can in here. We found ourselves using the top one a lot more. We just liked where that was positioned. But this side one is pretty much just as good, another great pocket. Now the final pocket is one we actually didn't see straight away looking at the pack. And it is on the corner right here, the kind of top left corner of the pack. And it's a tiny little pocket, but we found it to be really useful. So it only stretches down, you know, about three, four inches, but we found this great for coins while we were traveling. Anything small size that would otherwise get lost in the larger pockets is great for this little pocket here. We love this one. Now, before we get into the main compartment of this pack, there is one last thing that we have to check out, and that is the laptop compartment. Now, you can find access to it via a long zip on the back of the pack here. So we'll open that up, and here you will have size for a 15 inch laptop, even 15 inch laptop with a sleeve on or a case on, is gonna fit perfectly well inside of here. When there's a laptop inside as well, it can also work kind of like a frame sheet, so supporting uh, the back of the pack, giving it a bit of sturdiness, and don't worry about your laptop getting harmed at all, because there is a nice foam padding on the back here, which is gonna keep it completely safe. Now, at first, we were a little bit unsure about the location of the laptop compartment, but it ended up working really well in use. So we found that we were able to grab our laptop whenever we wanted to. We didn't have to open up the main compartment to get to it. We really like the laptop compartment on this bag. Now, let's finally unzip this main compartment and have a look inside. Now, at Pack Hacker, we've referred to bags that are really big inside as being like a bucket. Well, the Sangfist Sack is pretty much more like a full-on bathtub. There is so much room inside of this thing. Within the main compartment, you'll find a medium-sized pocket attached to the side. This is great for smaller items that would otherwise get lost inside the main compartment. We didn't find ourselves using it too often, but it's a nice addition. Turn your attention to the back of the panel opening and you will find three more pockets for some added organization. There's a long zip that will give you access to a large thin pocket, which is great for documents. 
And the final two interior pockets are both mesh and come in really useful. We found them ideal for our external hard drive case, but they'll work well for any items you need some added organization for. In our six weeks of testing to date, the Sangfist Zac has really traveled. It's been on trains, buses, and long haul flights, accompanying us on trips to the UK, France, Spain, Germany, and the USA. We've not been easy on this bag either. We've had it full to the brim and seriously heavy at times, and its durability has shone through. This is a bag that's built to last. The Sangfist Sack is going to look great in an urban city environment. It looked seriously good strolling around Paris in spring, and it will function flawlessly for your weekend trips. But with no hip belt, load lifters, and a shape that can cause the bag to sag a little bit at the bottom, there are some drawbacks. You can carry this bag when it's really heavy, but it's not ideal. So if you're looking for a pack that's gonna accompany you on a year long trip to Southeast Asia, this probably isn't the pack for you. That being said though, if you're in the market for a maximum legal carry-on size backpack that you wanna stuff a load of lighter weight items into, then you're gonna to need to seriously consider the Sangfist Zac. Now onto some of the pros and cons. This pack is very aesthetically pleasing and we think it looks great. There's some fantastic quick access pockets on the outside of the bag and all of the zips are at the back for added security. Onto some of the cons. There's no hip belt or load lifters on this bag. The bottom has a tendency to sag when heavy and the side pocket won't hold a water bottle very well. The Sangfist Zac, though sold as a weekend bag, works well as a travel pack and looks fabulous while doing it. The bag has been designed thoughtfully with great features and has been put together using durable materials that we trust will stand the test of time. With the lack of hip belt and load lifters, this bag isn't ideal for heavier weights, but if you need a ton of room and have a lighter load, this bag is a great option. Thanks for taking a look at our review of the Sangfist Zac backpack. Be sure to head over to packhacker.com forward slash newsletter and never miss an update. Thanks for checking this one out. We'll see you in the next one. My Swedish pronunciation is really gonna struggle in this one. Sandkvist. Sandkvist.